I'm so glad to be here this morning, and not on many assignments, but one, to share God's word to his people, with his people. One of you, but by the grace of God, today, to share his word. And because I don't want to assume we have got visitors, especially at Shiloh Worship Center, the place of breakthrough, I don't want to assume. I said, Shiro Worship Center, the place of breakthrough. Did you know nobody can break through for you? So if I were you, I hear a word that concerns me, you say, I receive it. In Jesus' name. I pray that will be your portion today. Because your father knows you are here, your father knows what you need, your father is concerned, your father wants to bless you. And this morning, I know we are in the month of February, and I know we have been dealing with the issue of redigging. And uh, the word redigging in itself should, it is just one of the seasons. We are in that season of redigging. Because life is full of many seasons. Many seasons. And seasons are like stairs. If you are not alert, if you are not conscious, you can miss a step. Depending on the season, are entering into. Therefore, when you are transiting from one season to the other, it's a nice place to be so much alert because some of the seasons will come and they stagger you around. And you know when you are staggering, you need somebody to hold on so that you can stabilize. I pray that this morning you'll be able to hold out to a pillar of the word of God and be able to stabilize in your life. Therefore, I want you to remain alert and know it is normal. It is life. We have been discussing the book of Genesis chapter 26, which is really, really talking about Isaac, the whole of it. It's about the life of Isaac. And the book of Genesis chapter 26 comes in at a transition, one of those difficult seasons of the life of Isaac. And maybe you can project for us Genesis chapter 26, and we are going to read from verse 1, maybe up to verse 3. And because it is hot here, although there, are, there is a blizz, we are going to read together. Sawa, sawa. Tell your neighbor we are, this one is teamwork. We are going to read together, okay? Ukiona, anasoma kwa roho, ujui hakusikiza instructions. Sitaki ware wanasoma kwa roho, nataka ware wanasoma kwa sauti. Let's go. Now there was a famine in the land besides previous famine in Abraham's time. Hold it there. Did you see it was not the first time there was a summing? There was another one earlier there. No wonder the Bible says there is, no, there is no temptation that has come to you that is not common to man. Even in those days, it was not the first time. Shall we continue? And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of Christians in Gera. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you to live. Hold it there. Isaac was in a challenge. There was famine. And he wanted to go and look for help, but in the wrong place. Thank God he was a rat. He had what God told him. The Lord told him, your help, this is where I will bless you. And I want to encourage somebody in the house today. It doesn't matter where you are right now. The Lord is going to sort you there. You are not permitted to go and look for help where God is not found. The Lord is here. Shall we continue the next verse? Stay in this land for a while, and I will be with you and will bless you. For to you and your descendants, I will give all these lands and will confirm the oath I swore to your father Abraham. He was given a promise. The Lord is giving you a promise this morning. He knows what you are going through. That problem you think is so special. He is saying, I'll sort it out here. And I'll show the world that I am God. I called you and I mind your businesses. It doesn't matter whether you are in that famine. The Lord will bless you there. He will not allow the nations, your neighbors, to be asking where is her God. 
That shall not be your portion in Jesus' name. Therefore, from verse 1, Isaac is full of stress in verse 1 because there is a famine. But we all know, I know we have, you have been following the theme. We end up when Isaac, from stress, lestlessness, lack, and he ends up in Rehoboth. I want to promise somebody here that your Rehoboth is round the corner. Hold on there, your Rehoboth. You may be so depressed today, so stressed today, but I want you to know the Lord is around. This morning, I would want us to read from the book of Luke. I know we have already read. But my, our main text, you'll find it in the book of Luke, chapter 15. It's a long passage. You'll be reading um, verses here and there. Um, 15, it, we, our story is from 15, verse 1 to 24. We may not read all the 24 verses, but I'll keep guiding us. And in those uh, 24 verses, we find three stories. And these stories, all the three stories have a theme. And the theme is loss, effort, and celebration. Loss, effort, and celebration. The first story is about a lost sheep. And the Bible says, the shepherd left the 99 and went to look for one. The Lord is here to find you here. By the way, he knows you are here. And he came and you are the business. Don't allow the enemy to tell you that Jesus is here for the other one. He's here for you. He has left the 99 for you because he knows you are here. And in that, in those, those are the, the first the few verses of that chapter. The shepherd leaves the 99 to go look for one. He finds the lost one and throws a party. The next story, actually in verse 5 and 6, he says, And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. The next story, also about Ross, is about the lost coin. And this we find um, immediately after that one. Verse 8 to 9, it says, or suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Doesn't she write up a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. Remember I said the, the theme is about to rust, you have lost something. Then there is effort, then there is celebration. The lie the enemy would want to tell you is that you can move from loss and jump into celebration. There has to be some effort from your part. And that's why I have entitled my sharing this morning, Redigging the Well of Personal Responsibility. You will only get to your both if you are willing to take responsibility. And the responsibility part of it is where you own it and do what you need to do. Like we all know the story we have been referring to. Uh, if you followed that story of Isaac, the Bible says that he was told you will plant here. He actually did plant. It was not making sense. It was dry. But when he obeyed, he was able to reap a hundredfold. And then the third story, and that is where I want us to dwell a, a little bit longer, is about the lost son. And this one we find it from verse 11. I want to read from verse 11 to 12. Jesus continued, There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Verse 13. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in world living. Here there is effort, but effort on the wrong direction. The son gathered, number one, he asked for his inheritance prematurely. He gathered his inheritance, everything that he owned, and he went to a distant land, and he spent it 
on wild living, whatever that means. This is the only story, apart from um, the first two. This one, there is a personal effort. In the first story, the sheep didn't make, any, didn't make any effort to be found. It was the effort of the shepherd. In the second story of the lost coin, the coin didn't make any effort to say, here I am, I'm the coin. It was the effort of the lady. But in the third one, we are talking about the son. First of all, he employed his effort on the wrong direction. He corrected everything. He left where he had been provided with everything. And he thought he knew better. Unlike the difference between him and Isaac, I want to believe every caring father must have tried to talk to this son. But the son was so adamant. Ya ni kwenda ni kwenda. I don't want, to, I want to go without a trace. The Bible says he corrected everything that looked like him. And off he told them, hi and bye. And he went. However, I would want us to read. When he went, things didn't turn out the way he expected. And in verse 17, Maybe you can lead it, verse 17. Ah, my screen went. Nazen Ziko. Okay. That's why you have to have a plan B. Thank God I had my plan B here. In verse 17 it says, When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. Remember, he's the one who asked for his inheritance. He's the one who put the effort. He's the one who went and spent. With, in wild, then he came to his senses. I don't know whom I'm talking to this morning. I know things have been tough. I don't know what, what decisions you could have made. And right now as I'm talking, broken and unspoken, you are feeling maybe where I am, I need not have been there. And now here is where we are talking about personal responsibility. The same son now decided to take responsibility. He started appreciating what he had been offered by his father before he left. And I would want us to read this back. Maybe we can read from verse 15. We we'll read verse 18 to 21. We are going to read together. I will set out to go back to my father and say to him, Father, Ay, mulienda wapi? Tulikuwa tunasoma zote. Oh, you, imagine mine had come back. I thought you was, sasa mmefanya whoever is there, ata yangu imeenda. Yangu hiko, wacheni niwasome, sawa. Zenu zimekuja? Bado? Aya, you better continue praying. Okay, let's, let me read for you. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your... Next verse, verse 20. So he got up, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him. And was filled with compassion for him. He... he came to a point where he took personal responsibility. Because he knew he's the one who put together. Number one, he's the one who asked for his inheritance. Number two, he's the one who corrected everything. Number three, he's the one who set out and decided which city to move to. A distant one. We are not told the name. Number four, he decided to spare it. And he didn't spare sparingly. He spent everything. So he took responsibility. And he even rehearsed how he's going to put things right. And this is what he said. 
I have seen, I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. I don't know what it is that you have stopped doing because of the circumstances surrounding you. You may not have gone to Mombasa. You may not have gone to Kisumu. You may not have gone to Nyeri. But maybe you have gone to your house. And there are many things you have decided you no longer wanted to do. And right now as I'm talking to you, you are feeling restless. You are feeling hopeless. You are feeling empty. You are feeling broken. And you don't know whom to talk to. I am here to remind us, as we redeem the well of personal responsibility, there is hope for you. Because you can go back to the father. In the first place, he had provided everything for this son. But he decided, God honors our choices. And to show that the father, or the, I don't know what the father, it's just imagination. How the father... And the mother, and by the way, I wonder, how come we are never told about the mother of this son? But let me, allow me to imagine. Maybe they used to pray for this son every morning. Every time they had an opportunity to pray, they came and knelt down asking God to bring back their son. And because he was in, involved in world living, maybe he even went there and changed the, the mobile number. You want nothing to do with your father, your people, you have nothing to do with them. And they used to pray. And I just allow me to imagine. The Bible says that the father saw him from a distance. And you wonder what he was doing outside there. But he kept hope alive. And praying, God, you are a faithful. One of these days, I know my son will come. And maybe he was reading from the book of Mark. That whatever things we shall ask, believe you have received and you will receive. And he kept hoping, my son will come. I'm here to encourage a parent. Maybe your son has gone wild. Your son, you don't know what to do. You have talked, you have prayed, you have yelled, but they have not brought fruit. I am here to tell you that God is coming through for you. God is coming through for your son. God is coming through for your daughter. God is coming through for your brother. God is coming through for your sister. There is a forum we usually have for prayer every Tuesday from 8.30, the daughters in the house. 8.30 to 10, we call it Daughters on Bended Knees. And we have time to pray together via Zoom. If you didn't know, now you know. After see, you can see Pastor Beatrice, you can see Washo, you can see Susan, you can see Bertha. Let me tell you some of the highlights we get on that. Because we have a, a link where we said our prayer requests in the morning up to one. Then somebody compiles them in the afternoon. Then in the evening from 9 to 10, from 8.30 to 9, we pray for the issues of our, our local church. But from 9 to 10 for that hour, we pray for their prayer, specific prayer request that the lady said through the link during the day. And most of the things we pray for, Pray for my brother, who has, my sister, who is hooked in bangi, in alcohol. Let me tell you, it is a prevailing problem. Therefore, as I'm talking this morning, I am not beating around the bush. I know there are people here who are crying for their sons, who are crying for their brothers, crying for their fathers. And this morning, I want to encourage you. He showed up. These stories have been put in the Bible to be an encouragement to you and me. So the father was watching back to our story. And he saw the son from a distance. Thank God for the heart of the father. And in this case, our heavenly father, whom we have come to present our cases to this morning. The heart of the father. The son had already revised how he will present his case to the father. But the Bible says, I don't think the father was interested with the speech. There is no way they discuss about the speech. Because the Bible says. But the father said to his servants. Quick. Bring the best 
robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fat and the calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. And I want you to mark the last part of it. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and he is found. So they began to celebrate. This morning, I don't want, I want to imagine and I want to believe because the Lord gave me the message. There could be somebody here. You are a dead, but you are a walking. You know you have missed it. You are walking. You walk to church. Thank God for spiritual. In the spirit, the corpses walk. And they have walked to Shiloh this morning, the place of breakthrough. How I pray that you meet the heart of the Father and be able to reconcile and be able to be restored and be able to celebrate one more time in Jesus' name. And because I want, I'd want us towards there to have enough time to pray, I know we have prayed, but we are going to pray this morning. And allow me to pick a few life lessons about this son. And this son could be you. This daughter could be you. Number one, the prodigal son made a long decision which broke the heart of his father. He asked for his inheritance prematurely. This request, the father granted it. She go pande. Now that you have insisted, I'll give it to you. But he didn't want to give him then. Much as he did that, he still kept on hoping that he will come back to his senses. How I pray this morning that somebody can come back to his senses and know that the father is waiting. The father is willing to receive him back. Maybe you think you have brought it. I have got good news for you this morning. You can come back. The father is waiting. The father wants to celebrate. It was so serious. As far as Mr. and Mrs. were concerned, we are not told the name of the father in this case. Their son was dead. And so when he saw him walking, my son was dead, but now he's alive. What is better than life? This morning you are alive. And not just alive. Alive and in the house of God. There is hope for you because you are interacting with the word of God. I pray you get hold of the word and say I am stabilizing mentally. I am stabilizing emotionally. I am stabilizing physically. Maybe you are sick because you are here interacting and loving shoulders with the word of God. The Bible says that his word is God himself. So the prodigal son made a wrong decision and it broke the heart of his father. Number two, he made a wrong choice of going away from home where everything that he had, he had needed was being provided for. He made another wrong turn. Number three, he made the wrong choice of spending his money with wild living. He spent to the last coin. The other major issue we pray for on Tuesdays it's about breakthrough in finances. See, we pray for breakthrough in finances and stored projects. This morning, could it be there are some things you are doing wrong? You can come back to the Father. Today we are talking about our Heavenly Father. When we were in school, our math teacher used to give us formulas. And they would tell us, as long as you use this formula, you should be able to get the right answer. For adventure, you do it and you get the wrong answer. Those teachers were so good. It was very hard to get zero. The teacher would come and follow the formula because they would tell you to show how you got to that answer. And so he'll tell you, up to here, you are okay. But here, you made a wrong turn. That is the heart of a teacher. But today, we are talking about the heart of a father. He is willing to come down and tell you everything was okay, but you made a wrong turn. Are you willing to take personal responsibility and make things right like this son and come back to the father where everything is provided for? This son made the wrong choice. When he made the first choices, the choices kept on taking him farther and farther and farther. 
But there is no farthest where the heart of our heavenly father can't get you. He thought he, was, he had gone to a distant land. He had spent to the rusty coin. And he, he was too tough. Instead of going back to the father, he decided to look for a hassle there. The Bible says he went and looked for somebody where he can attach himself. Going further and further. Are you there listening to me? And you know you have been drifting and drifting and drifting. A series of wrong choices. I want to tell you there is no hole that is so deep that the heart of the Father can't get you out. There is no distance that is so far that God is not willing. There is no famine that is so severe that God is not able to bring a well spring of life. We are talking about digging of wells. Once you take personal responsibility, even where there is lack, even where there is starvation, there is a well right where you are. And maybe you are listening to me and you are saying this story and the way you have been hearing about it since we were in Sunday school. And I know majority of us are believers. And imagine the Lord still gave me the message for you. When things are tough, when the environment is not favorable, there is a tendency on giving up on God. Things no longer make sense to you. Things that used to excite you, they no longer excite you. Whether you pray or not pray, it doesn't matter. After all, he doesn't hear. A son of my friend lost his job or his contract was not revealed. And now the mother has been telling, let's believe God, let's believe God. And the mother was telling me the other day, I didn't know I am here to tell you about God. Your only hope is God. It doesn't matter where you are. Our only hope is God. So are you there? And because of where you are, you are no longer interested with God. Reading, reading the Bible, whether you read or not, it is okay. Whether you pray or not, it is okay. Home sale, wewe uliacha kweda kitambu. Men's group, you can't remember maybe even your reader. Because the last time you attended a men's group was in 2019, before Corona. I was told it is called BC, before Corona. Red is group, you have it, but only in writing. You also, the last time you went there was before Corona. And Monday prayers, you can't even remember the last time. And not that you fail to come to Shiro or to main campus because you are praying in your house. You are busy with many other things. Everything else apart from prayer. I am here to call upon you, redigging the well of personal responsibility. If this son never took responsibility and come up with a plan of how he will go back, what he will tell the father, and what he will do, I can tell you he maybe would have died in that distant land. Are you there? You are so discouraged that you are no longer. These are the manifestations that you have spent everything and you are running on empty. I have got good news for you this morning. The father is in the house to refill your tank and become one more interested and be a frame for the Lord. And the bad thing is, once you stop those um, God practices, you automatically find yourself enjoying alternative practices. We have read that this prodigal son was in the wrong company. If you are not in the right company, then automatically you are in the wrong company. You have exchanged and you have settled for the good instead for the best. I am here this morning to encourage everyone listening to me to go back and redig the well of personal responsibility. Nobody will ever read the word for you. 
Nobody will ever grow for you. You are the only, you are the best person to present your case before God. Whether you will present it in Kikuyu, you will present it in Kikamba, you will present it in Kimeru, God understands all those languages. And sometimes you will even just decide before him. The Bible says that he has given us the Holy Spirit who prays for us even when you cannot express yourself. We are in the year of redeeming and repossessing. And the repossessing part of it is the celebration part of it. There will be no celebration without your effort. What we are calling personal responsibility. You will be watching people come. Those who are ready to pay the price. And the price is the effort part of it. Have you outgrown then your need for God? That you have become so mature in your Christian walk that you no longer feel that you need to read the word? You are on the wrong track. And very soon, you will be dry. We may cut a branch of that green tree here. Immediately we cut, we cut it, it will look green. In the evening, it will still look green. Tomorrow morning, it will be green. Let me tell you, by Sunday, it will be dry. And in a month's time, you can cook tea with the firewood there. And this morning, I am here to stir up that well of personal responsibility and know that living a Christian is daily. Every day, we are fighting a full-time devil. You can never afford to be a part-time Christian. You have to arise every day and remind yourself, I am a Christian. And go and meet God at your personal crosset. And he will ranch you to the mandate of the day. And it is on the prayer crosset where God will whisper and tell you about somebody. You pray for the somebody and later on you come to understand why the Holy Spirit was giving you that assignment. Woe unto you if you have nowhere where you have that moment when you are telling the Lord, launching, launch me to the responsibilities of the day. Is it a wonder that there are so many malnourished Christians in the church today? Malnourished because you are no longer feeding on the right menu. The menu of a Christian. If you don't survive with one meal a whole week, how can you survive? But just the, the 40 minutes in church where the pastor reads the word. Are you surprised that you are so helpless? You can't remember. This morning, my mandate is one, that we can go back to the Father. We can go back to the Father to be relaunched back to the world. And when we put personal effort, there is time for celebration. When the Bible says when he came back to his senses, he started appreciating a number of things that he was better off in his father's house. And maybe because men and women know you as a believer, you have been acting and walking like a corpse because you cannot be a Christian enough to own up and say, I'm feeling so weak, I am giving up. This morning, this altar is ready to receive you back. And by the way, let me tell you, don't think here there is one who doesn't need God. Others, then they are in the wrong place. What did you come to do? So we are all beggars. We came to be refueled. We came to be refilled. And maybe those of you, there are those of us, maybe have our bank accounts are fat. We have money. But there are other things that we lack. Let me tell you, in the house of God, there is everything. You can come back to the house of the Father because there is everything. But for you to have access, you have to go back. He realized he was better off when he was in the father's house. He had lost that status, but he was ready to pay the price to get it back. He took responsibility of redigging. He came back and came up with a personal plan. Do you have a personal plan of redigging back a healthy personal relationship with your heavenly father? You used 
to enjoy your moment with God, reading his word, praying, witnessing. There are times you really used to enjoy. You used to look forward to a Monday to go for prayer. You used to look forward to a Wednesday to go back for the midweek service. You used to go back to enjoy and look forward to going to a Kesha. You used to look forward to going to a Sunday service. These days you go, you come late. Maybe there should be room and say, instead of telling people I came for service, be telling them I came for half service. Because now if you come when we have gone half the service, you, may, you have eaten half. Is it a wonder then you are malnourished in your spirit? So this prodigal son came up with a plan. He came up with a personal plan. He never involved anybody else. He said, I will go back. Nobody can go back for you. It is you. He said what he will do. It, you are the only one who can say what you will do. He implemented the plan and followed through. How do we know? He went back. Although the father never engaged to discuss the personal plan, we know that he implemented the plan. And this morning I want to ask you, are you willing to take responsibility for your restoration? Are you ready to pay the price? Are you willing to start Continue until you become. You are aware of what you used to enjoy. What you used to do and you know you have stopped doing. To some of us, we even know the day and the date when you started drifting away when you compromised. And from that day, you started acting. The sad part is that you know you have lost your joy of salvation. Broken and unspoken. You are not happy. You do not enjoy, but you don't know what to do. This morning, I know what we can do, and we'll be restored. You can redeem the well of your personal relationship with God. But for you to be restored, you must accept that you lost it, and you want it back. Whatever the cost. One of the costs this son was willing to pay is to become a servant instead of a son. I have got good news. You receive Jesus Christ as your personal savior. That is a done deal. You are a son. I said you are a son. Tell your neighbor you are a son. Look at the other one who doesn't want to look you directly. Tell them you are a son. You can never be reborn to become a slave. You are a son. So your personal plan should not include that you be reborn again as a slave. Because by the grace of God, God selected you from among many people. Jesus, God selected you. Jesus saved you. And the Holy Spirit sealed you for eternity. Did you hear what I said? That God the Father selected you from among many. You remember that day when the gospel was preached. And they asked who wants to receive the Lord. You said I am. He selected you. Jesus saved you and paid the price. And then the Holy Spirit has sealed you for eternity. You bear the mark of God. You can always enjoy. And start enjoying your fellowship with the Father. The process must be that one. There is this story in the book of 2 Kings chapter 6. We will not read. In the book of 2 Kings chapter 6 verse 1 to 6. It talks about the lost, the axe that fell down. When it fell down, the prophet asks, where did it fall? You are the only one who, where you know you made a wrong turn. Where did it fall? You have to point to where. When he pointed where, the prophet was able to start up and the Bible says the axe came up. And then he was told to pick it up. Personal responsibility. Today we will pray, we will come back. But maintaining that fire, it is your personal responsibility. So I want to ask you this morning. Do you know what you have lost? Do you know where you lost it? Are you willing to Point where it got lost. And are you willing to pick it up? 
Because if you are not willing to do that, when you abandon the well, several things will happen. You will become so stressed. There will be starvation. There will be restlessness. There will be joylessness. You will be peaceless until you take responsibility. Because Jesus Christ is our only hope. When the well is abandoned, there is stress, there is scarcity, there is depression. And the third debate is, like the Philistines did, yani, not that they wanted the wells to enjoy the water, they returned the mud. Yani, yani, they just put mud. Not that they wanted their animals to enjoy the water, they put mud. Let me tell you, the devil is celebrating when you, are hopeless, you look hopeless and helpless. And I pray that the enemy will not be laughing at you, asking you, where is your God? Because you'll be telling them, my God, I called upon him, and he showed up. In the, in the youth service, our brother Edward shared a story of how he went one day to return his son to school, and he didn't have school fees. But he went and saw the teacher and said, I'll be back. Right now, I'm not able, but I'll be back. And before he left, just immediately he stepped out of the, uh, the, the teacher's office, the empesa, Ikaingia. And when he looked, there was money. He just went back and said, my God has come. That shall be your portion, because our God is at work. God will come through. One of the words you can never describe God is being unfaithful. He will never answer to that one. He is faithful, he will show up. And let me tell you, when you go back, Isaac, when he, he remained a rat and obeyed and didn't go back to Egypt, towards the end, after getting to Rehoboth, we all, um, in Genesis, maybe you can project it as I wind up, project Genesis 26, verse 16. 26, verse 16. I am waiting, I am waiting, verse 16, somebody, thank you. Then Abimelech said to Isaac, move away from us, you have become too powerful for us, hold it. I may not have been there, but I don't need to be told it was not a kind instruction to be given. Move away, move away. You know, move away from us. But let me tell you, because Isaac had had God and he had seen what God has done. If you go to verse 26, the same Abimelech, verse 26, it says, Meanwhile, Abimelech had come to him from Gera. The same Abimelech who had said, move away from us. He even came with somebody, Ahuza, his personal advisor. And who? The commander of his forces. Next verse. Isaac asked them, why have you come to me since you are hostile to me and sent me away? They answered, we saw clearly that the Lord was with you. So we said, there ought to be so, a sworn agreement between us, between us and you. Let us make a treaty with you, next verse, that you will do us no harm, just as we did not harm you, but always treated you well and sent you away peacefully. Are you sure? And now, you are blessed by the Lord. That shall be your portion. When you go back to the Father, when you go back to the well, even those who are pushing you away, telling you move away, they will come to seek peace with you because they will have a testimony and they will say, we have looked at you and we have seen that the Lord has blessed you. That will be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. The very same people who are laughing at you, 
they will come seeking you and they will be they will not come alone because they are not trusting you you are already too powerful for them and they will make a declaration that you look like the blessed of the lord are there people in the house who want to be named the blessed of the lord there is hope for you in the house of god today the very same people who told you move away from us they will come saying Pray for us. We have seen your God answers prayer. They will say, they will know that you believe a mighty God. That shall be our portion because in 2023, we are going to take responsibility. We will do what we need to do. We will make right what we need to make right. And they will come to give us a testimony asking for peace with us. Imagine they are going to look for peace with Isaac. And Isaac is not even in their city. They can't trust him. They are from Gera. Isaac has already gone and built a city in Beersheba. But they are looking for peace. Because the Lord will come out strong for us. In the year 2023, we are taking responsibility. And we are going back to our God. Because there is everything that we need. Because our God is faithful. It says, and now you are blessed by the Lord. Isaac then made a feast for them, and they ate and drank. Early the next morning, the men swore an oath and to each other. Then Isaac sent them on their way, and they went away peacefully. That day, Isaac's servants came and told him about the well they have dug. They said, we have found water. He called it Sheba. And to this day, the name of the town has been Beersheba. Isaac did not pay back, did not evade himself. He blessed them. When the Lord will bless you, you will tell them, this is how my God acts like. I will pray for you. Or even if you had talked to Eva about me, I will pray for you because I want you to come over. And this morning, all of us, I don't know what it is that you have abandoned. I don't know the well you have abandoned. But this morning, because I said all of us came because there is something that we need from the house of God. That's why you came. All of us, with no exception. You came because there is something we need. And I want us to, all of us, arise on our feet. We are all going to arise on our feet. I don't know whether you are there. You could be there. Let's start it here. For sure, for sure, you know without a doubt. You have lost it completely. You used to love the Lord, but you have drifted back. Or you have never even known the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior. You know it for sure that I'm not a believer. I have given up. Are you there? With every eye closed and everyone's looking from inside because we are talking about personal responsibility. Could you be there and you are walking, but you and God know you are a dead? Because those of us who don't have the Lord Jesus Christ, as far as the Bible is concerned, we are spiritually dead. Could you be there and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? And today, the 12th of November, no of February, you would want to give your life to Jesus. Are you there? If you are there, if you lift up your hand, I will see it, and we are going to pray for you. You are there, you know you have never said yes to Jesus. Or you know you said it, but along the way, you threw up your hands, and you said, enough is enough. Are you there? You would want to rededicate your life to Jesus. Just lift up your hand. Remember I said all of us came here because we need him. Could that be your need? Could that be your need? No shame. Remember, every provision is at the well, is at the Father's feet. Are you there? Even as you continue meditating, I know without an exception, there is an area that the Spirit has spoken to you 
And I would want us to make this confession as we sing this song. Lord, I am coming home.